everybody, welcome back to Recordology. So this is a very strange thing. This particular product, as I was opening it, I had no idea what on earth it was. And as we open it together here in a minute, I think that you will experience that as well. It is the most bizarre design of its type of product I have ever seen, bar none. And I've said that before about these, but this one takes the cake. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome to Recordology. So sometimes what happens is I coordinate a product to review, sometimes days and weeks in advance of filming. Then by the time it arrives, I've honestly just forgotten about what on earth I had ordered or what the product is. And such was the case with this. I, I received this item in this very nondescript box that doesn't do anything to really help you understand what it is. I mean, it, it's, I assume this is a line drawing of the product, which really doesn't help. Like, what is this? The only giveaway is the size, which is, as you can see, I don't know, seven, eight inches square, this box. And then opening the package and looking at the product itself, it doesn't seem to help anymore. What is this thing? This is the weirdest thing. It's in this very nice box with even sponge on the top. It's got a magnetic closure, very fancy, but what is this product? So it's got a little finger lift and I pull the product out here and I'm <laughs> still mystified at this point. And then I go like this and I'm like, oh, it's a CD player. Still mystified because this is the most bizarre looking CD player I have ever seen bar none. So let's take the film off. Now you guys know that I love a compact disc player. I love CD players. And a few times on this show, we've reviewed some strange looking ones, but this takes the cake. So this is the portable CD player from Tretatree. And if that name rings a bell, stand by and you'll remember why. But if we look on the back here, we can see the specifications it runs on five volts. It's got an internal rechargeable battery like all new CD players seem to do. It plays some interesting formats, uh, minus R, CDDA, CDRWs, but HDCDs, that's an interesting one. One of my colleagues recently did a show talking about HDCD. It was kind of an offshoot of the regular CD format that kind of failed. I guess I would call it a failed sub format. It was around the late 90s, early 2000s. By mid-2005, it was gone. Essentially what it was is they figured out a way to cram 20 bits of data into a compact disc and have it be backwards compatible with regular CDs. So you could have an HD CD compatible player like this that would play both. Kind of interesting to see that on a new machine. The original patent was purchased by Microsoft and then Microsoft discontinued their web page. They probably still own the patents, but they're not making a big deal out of it. Anyway, charge time is three hours. 2000 milliamp battery, Bluetooth range. It does transmit Bluetooth. I'm glad to see that. Typical 30 meter range. It'll probably do a lot more than that, but they always publish 30 meters as the official range. Signal to noise ratio is greater than 70 dB. Total harmonic distortion is less than 3%. It gives the dimensions. It's made of ABS plastic and aluminum alloy and weighs 360 grams made in China. Additionally, Doing a little bit of further research, I learned that the anti-skip on this, if you're doing data CDs with MP3s on them, is about two minutes. But if you're just doing regular compact disc audio, it's about 45 seconds of anti-skip buffer. So the product itself is bizarre. Is this a, a kitchen scale? My wife thought it looked like a coffee warmer. This is big enough to put a full, you know, like one of those bun restaurant style coffee uh, carafes on. You can, it looks like some kind of kitchen equipment or a scale or something to my eyes. And it's got like this very uh, pronounced ridge around the outside edge here. And as we look at the side of it, you will see that it has a very sharp, and this feels quite sharp to the, to the touch edge on the bottom. So officially they consider this a portable compact disc player, but to me, it looks like something you would just set and forget, not something that you would carry around. Although obviously it is portable, 
Also very bizarre that they include all of the specifications printed on the bottom of the product. I have never seen anything like that before. This is the same spec specifications that we just looked at are printed onto the product. So if you ever forget your manual, it's built in. We've got little foam pads there and all of our access points and controls around the side. Let's take a closer look here and see what we got. Okay, so on and off is going to be a switch. That's assumedly our headphone jack, our type C USB charger. Uh, that would be probably the Bluetooth. So you can use that to pair this. This sends Bluetooth. So you'd pair this with speakers, headphones, etc., etc. There's our transport control. So forward and back, left and right there, as well as a play pause. Over here we have plus and minus. That would be volume. I don't see any other controls. So I guess it's not programmable. Um, however, I do believe it mentioned that it had different play modes. And then you got the screen on the side as well. Let me go ahead and look at that manual and see if we can figure out if it's programmable or how to change the play modes. So in the box, you've got the user guide. It does come with a USB-C cable. And I'm guessing that's it for the package itself. Let's take a look at the manual and see what we've got going on here. So there is an LED light on the front and the different colors mean different things. White light means it's working well. Green light is fully charged. Orange is, it, orange is it's charging. Orange flashing, battery is getting low. And orange quickly flashing means the battery is very, very low. And okay, that makes sense. It says device can play approximately 13 hours with regular CDs and approximately 10 hours in Bluetooth mode. So because of the fact it's got anti-skip, it's actually reading the disc back faster than real time loading it into a buffer. I wish we knew what the actual, I always say this, I wish we knew what the DAC specifications were and I wish we knew what the resolution of that buffer was. Is it playing it back lossless? Is it compressing it? Hopefully not. Here's another overview of the controls. Let's see if there's some mention. Uh, okay, so type C. Okay, so the Bluetooth button is the one that changes the playback mode. So repeat, repeat all. Uh, let's see if there's anything here about programming. I don't see anything about programming tracks. So not a programmable CD player. This is, by the way, $89. And if you don't care for the Bluetooth transmit option and you want to forego that, you can get another version for $59 that doesn't have the Bluetooth. It's also available in white, which looks pretty cool. But this one looks cool as well. I like the black and the copper colored. Yeah, this is a bizarre, isn't this a weird thing? I mean, this is kind of cool. Does it go all the way around? Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at that. I'd be, okay, this is just going to, this is something to fiddle with. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend this for small children because that, that, I can see that getting snapped off easily. What does that look like underneath, I wonder? So on the bottom side, it's got sort of a felt and it's just pivoting there on something. And then we've got the, uh, the disc, you know, area. The only leverage point to grab the disc is this indent on this side right here. I don't see like a three inch disc leverage area. This is maybe somewhat shock mounted here. It's on a separate piece, but pretty simple. Let's go ahead and try it out. I mean, it can't hurt anything to try it out. I'm gonna try out this big band CD. So we're gonna put our disc in there and I guess you can close it any way you want. Let's look at the menu and see what it's like to load up a disc. Okay, I guess I'll start by turning it to the on position. There's also a locked position, so you can play it without it. Um, the button's activating it unwanted. Okay, so reading, and we've got what looks to be a Bluetooth logo in there as well. Kind of interesting. CD, I like the black and white screen. That's really cool. And it looks to be backlit. So it loads the disc up, starts playing it, shows our battery life. I haven't charged this yet. Okay, the, the kid inside of me has to know. Can you just open it? I mean, I, can you just flip it open? And does that stop the disc playing or does it just keep going? It looks like it's just, and you shouldn't do that. Because if the disc is translucent, then you don't want that laser light, you know, shining through. I'm going to hit, first let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hit that Bluetooth button and see if I can use that to change the play mode. So I hit it once. Oh, that must be the skip button. Let me try this button. Okay, so that's gonna repeat one, repeat all, 
shuffle, and then off. Okay, and if I press and hold it, I'm assuming that puts it into pairing mode. Okay, BT on, connected. I don't know what it connected to, probably, I have no idea what it connected to. There's a couple devices around here. So, all right, that's the gist of it. Look at the texture, by the way. It kind of looks like there would be a speaker up here in this grill, but there's not, so. Interesting. Let's connect it to a speaker and test out the sound quality. So if Treta Tree sounds familiar, it's because of this, the mysterious mountain shaped available in three colors. Once $800, now $700 Bluetooth speaker that is enormous. How enormous is it? Well, there's a CD player next to it. This thing sounds fantastic. It's got a funky, crazy design. I don't think I would drop 700 bucks on it unless money was of no object to me. However, it looks very nice next to this. A coloring of the copper here matches this pretty close. I like it. I've got it paired over Bluetooth. I'm gonna listen to it with a direct feed on headphones too off camera, let you know what I think. But let's go ahead and get this party started by playing some music on here, I think. One of the difficulties right up front is it's hard to know where the controls are on the CD player. Okay, play. I thought we were already... Skipping tracks here. seems to take a second or two longer to switch tracks than on a regular CD player. But like I said, let me try this off camera, just listening to headphones and see what I think. So I've had this for a while now. I've listened to it with different headphones, different varieties of music, different styles of music, I mean. At the end of the day, it is very unique. It is functional. There's no huge red flags. There's just some things that are kind of annoying to me. So I wanted to share those with you and just kind of give you my overall thoughts. I think that this is a cool thing, fun to fidget with. I could see this falling off at some point. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea that you can open this during play. It's a, a valid yet you know, argued point whether or not the red laser radiation is damaging. But at the same time, I just think it's bad practice to be able to access a spinning disc. I think this should lock when it's in play and then open when it's not, but it's always open. It's always open. And this piece being metal and the rest of it being plastic means that it's heavy too. So, you know, I could see this getting knocked open, you know, in your bag too, because that thing just wants to swing down like that. Uh, also, it is kind of hard to get the disc out. This is the only access point. And if you have big fat fingers like I do, you kind of, and you have to get this out of the way first it's kind of tricky to pull the disc out. So I think that there needs to be a larger leverage point on there. Uh, the, the CD player is a basic function CD player. It does not have programmable features. There's no bass boost. This does not affect play whatsoever. This is a completely passive piece of metal. It doesn't, it doesn't shut it off or do anything. To, sh to stop the disc, you have to shut the unit off with a switch. You can hit pause and uh, I believe that will stop the disc as well, but there's no stop button. That's kind of frustrating. Next thing is the light is up here, but the display is down here. And this thing being 100%, you know, symmetrical all the way around, it was, very, you get lost. You don't know where the front of it is. You just grab it. You don't know if you're looking at the side, the front, the back. So I constantly, was you know shuffling around trying to find the controls that I wanted. Now where was the play? Where was the pause? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And that was kind of frustrating too. It is not comfortable to hold. This edge is sharp. I mean it's not going to cut you, 
but it feels sharp. It doesn't feel to me like a portable device. It feels like a device you would put on your kitchen cabinet or kitchen counter and just leave it. And I think that that's probably my recommended use case for this would be to you know place it somewhere statically. And don't forget that it needs to be charged every now and then it does have a, a rechargeable internal battery. So it's not you know, even plugged in. It's a wireless thing. So I would use this as a transmitting Bluetooth CD player that sits in one location for most of the time. I wouldn't be carrying this in my backpack. I wouldn't consider this fully portable. And with it, that being the case, you know, you're not going to plug in your headphones most of the time. You're probably going to be using the Bluetooth out functionality. It was reasonably easy to pair. Um, th there's basically Bluetooth on and off. And when it turns on, it goes into pairing mode. So you put it next to a Bluetooth speaker, put that in pairing mode, and they connect magically together at some point. It does use Bluetooth 5. Uh, I'm not sure if it's using uh, an advanced codec on Bluetooth 5. I'm sure it's still probably lossy. Sound quality over Bluetooth sounded okay to me. It sounded fine. When I listened to my headphones directly plugged in through the jack, it sounded a little bit unimpressive. It was a little hollow sounding. You heard motor noise. You heard little sounds of you know the motor queuing up little audible things that on silence were noticeable when the music started you really didn't notice it there's also a considerable amount of hiss and again i tried everything from cheap earbuds to high-end over-the-ear studio headphones same thing no bass boost like i said it's just kind of meh it was it was okay it was just wasn't as exciting as i hoped it to be usually when something is designed so crazy like it reminds me of like Bang & Olufsen design. You expect the sound quality to blow your mind or the functionality to blow your mind just like the, the design does. And the design is really cool visually. It's just on a practical level. I don't know if it's 100% something that they nailed. And at $89, I'd probably be looking elsewhere for a CD player. At 59 you lose the Bluetooth capability and then you know, you're back to trying to make this work as a portable. So uh, I'm not going to say I don't recommend it, but I'm also not going to say that I highly recommend it. I'll make the link available if you're interested in trying it for yourself. But I do think it's interesting and something that makes for an interesting review video. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. Thank you so very, very much for being there. Consider a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and consider joining us on The Vinyl Nation for an extra show every week. But most importantly, I just want to say thank you so very much for being there. If you're interested in this product, there will be a link in the description below. Have fun, happy record hunting, and we will see you next time.